What's going on guys? This is Adam from the Ursa Sanctuary here. And today we're gonna do a care video on the Gastrophrolus pristina or the green keel bellied lizard. So these equatorial lizards are found on the coastal plains of both Kenya and Tanzania. They are restricted to a few populations in the forest of Arabuko Sokoke, the Usambara Mountains, the Zaranange Forest in Guru Mountains, and Watamu, Kenya. Now although this range seems very small, keep in mind that these national parks are protected. Therefore, the Gastrophilus prasina is only listed as near threatened. That could obviously change. There's a ton of deforestation going on in this area. Due to Africa's recent push to become agriculturally self-sufficient, which is awesome, at the same time, this push will heavily stress the forest and the animals that call the forest home in this area. Now, in terms of the species being kept in captivity, there's really not a lot of information out there on them. You can look on the internet, you know, I'm still looking for a good book that I haven't found yet. So this species is a little bit towards the unknown side of our reptile community. That being said, they seem to be a pretty easy species to care for. Temperature. Now even though the forests in which these guys are from are in Africa, and when we think of Africa we usually think hot, dry, arid desert, savanna, or scrub, there is a lot of rainforest in Africa. Now in this part of eastern Tanzania and eastern Kenya, Temperatures can range from, you know, high 60s to about mid to high 80s. That's about, that's about the hottest it's going to get, which is definitely seen in captivity through the behavior of these lizards. Micah, ADD Reptiles, and I have noticed that this species seems to be a little bit more active when it's a little cooler in their enclosures. This is a diurnal, which means they are active in the daytime, arboreal species. However, they are not a canopy species. They tend to hang around in the lower to mid part of the trees, where there's a bunch of nooks and crannies where they can get cool or look for prey items in which they can eat. In our enclosures, we keep the temperatures around 72 to 85. Humidity. This is a very humidity loving species. Uh, as you can see from this chart, right around this time of year in April to May is when this uh, national park in Arubuko Sokoke gets the highest amount of rainfall, close to 9 inches. Right now, as I'm making this video, the humidity is about 80%. However, as we move into the summer months, June, July, August, September, it's time for the dry season. Around this time of year, it's mostly sunny, although it can rain some days. It is definitely the driest part of the year. So if you plan on breeding these animals, you might want to cycle them in this way. Keep it hot and wet in the spring, and then cool it down a little bit and dry it out in the summer. That's what it's like in these creatures' natural habitat. Although the humidity as I'm making this video is about 80%, we recommend somewhere between 60 to 70 if you're going to keep them in a constant humidity while they're a part of your collection. Diet. This is a predominantly insectivorous species. However, I'm sure in the wild they are opportunistic and I'm sure you know they would have a go at anything smaller than them. At ADD Reptiles, this pair of juveniles has a diet consisted mainly of crickets and roaches dusted with calcium. size slash lifestyle. I touched on this a little bit earlier. This is an arboreal and also diurnal species. So if you do have a pair, you will notice that they're very active during the daytime and at night is when they kind of curl up, go to sleep uh, in their logs or whatever you provide for them. According to the IUCN red list, this species was rarely, if ever, spotted in the upper canopy of the trees in which they live. They're usually found to the mid to lower parts of the trees. Being a relatively smaller lacerted species, these guys are pretty thin and slender since they're an arboreal species, and they reach about six to eight inches as adults, without tail. Their tail adds another, I don't know, 10, eight inches on them. Really long tails in these guys. Caging requirements. In order to replicate their natural habitat as best as you can, it's important to provide these guys a ton of cover. Whether that be logs, bark, foliage, you know, fake plants, hides. Although you'll probably see them out the majority of the day, it's also important that they can get away if they need to. At ADD Reptiles, they are kept in a melamine cage. As of right now, they are still pretty small. This 24 by 24 by 36 inch enclosure for them is pretty spacious for them right now. However, as they get older, you know, something along the lines of a four foot by two foot by two foot would suffice for a pair of adults. Always provide water for your animals. And in this enclosure, they get about a 50 watt heat bulb. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for me. 
I hope you enjoyed learning about this awesome species. This species is so cool. They're one of the more interactive species, not into the sense that you, you, you can handle them very well. They are slender and pretty feisty little guys, but just in the sense that they're always moving around. Uh, when you throw food in there, they are pretty active, more active and energetic than some of your other common species in the reptile hobby. If you guys want to know anything else about the species, leave it in the comments below and I will do my best to answer it as accurately as I can. Like I said, not a lot of information out in these guys. Uh, I hope as time goes by and more people have these guys in their collections, more information will come out and maybe somebody will write a book one day. I always use books. Books are published and credited, so they're a lot better than the internet. Alright guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next adventure.